I read the back and it says, I tried to keep my tone light as I asked. Now, what is this all about? What are you proposing? We are proposing, Walter replied, to bring the dead back to life. That was it, automatic buy. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and this weekly vlog is going to be a lot of me wearing pyjamas. <laughs> it's just, just gonna be the way it is. I am on my eight day week stretch. Technically it's meant to be 10, but I took annual leave for two of them. And uh, yeah, we're on day three out of eight. So we have five more days to get through and when I'm working, as soon as I get home, all I ever want to do is change into my pyjamas unless I'm going out somewhere. So pyjamas week it is unless of course I decide to start filming in the mornings instead because this week I'm actually on a really nice shift but also not great for filming. We're just gonna see how it goes but I think it's probably gonna be after work pyjamas. Uh, so of course I changed my mind but we all know that's the thing. Anyway I've been rambling for like a minute and I haven't even spoken to you about the book I'm reading which is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tujimura. This is a translated book from Japanese and this one is translated by Philip Gabriel. And at the end of last week, I was in the middle of reading this, I got up to part two and I was saying how I was just getting a bit frustrated with our main character and after rambling to you guys about it for a little while, I came to the conclusion it's just because she's so young. That's not a bad thing, but for me when I prefer reading a lot more adult book and I have a lot more mature characters, unless, unless it's YA murder mystery, that's a whole different ballpark, I just find it a little bit frustrating. And also the bullying in this, like don't get me wrong, the topic of this book in dealing with how dreadful bullying is, societal pressures, and just that belief in yourself and also how important friendships are is a really important topic, yes but not one I particularly like reading. So I do fully understand where this book is going with it and how it's trying to tackle that problem. Also showing the effect bullying can have, that anxiety, that fear and everything. So I do think it does a really good job of that. It's just not something I personally like reading. And like I said, our main character is just frustrating, but that is because she's so young. Today I've read up to part three, which is page 199. You can see why so many people have liked this book, the connections that you can make to The Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, to Alice in Wonderland, all of that is really good in this and Portal Fantasy is something I normally really like. Just a shame about the billion thing, I am going to finish it, I honestly, I should probably, I'm aiming to finish it this week, so I will keep you updated on how it goes. You know what, I was about to carry on rambling about it, but I think I've covered it. We're going to stop myself rather than having to edit everything. Another thought I've been having is about wrap-ups. So I would normally, and I have done for the past two years, is every single month at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month, I would do a monthly wrap up of everything I've read that month. However, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting really fed up of filming them. They're really awkward to film, especially because I put that pressure on myself of I need to get this up within a week of the next month starting because otherwise what's the point? It becomes so irrelevant and because of that time frame that I put myself under I then find it really difficult to film. One because I have shift work and two because I do live at home so I'm always conscious of all the background noise that's going on. So just a whole big thing. So I've decided I'm just not going to do them anymore. I will be doing little wrap ups over at TikTok. So if you're interested and you want to know what I've read for the month, then you can have it there. It's literally just gonna be the book with a one sentence thing to summarize it, that's it. Mainly part of this decision was the fact that I do these vlogs. I'm so in depth with all of my thoughts that I don't think I need the monthly wrap ups. Like I will not watch anyone else's wrap ups Unless, of course, like, I'm really good friends with them, so I'm supporting their channel and everything, or if they don't do vlogs. Otherwise, I will not watch the wrap-ups, or I'll put them off for ages until I have nothing else to watch, because I already know all their thoughts, because I've been watching the vlogs, and I prefer watching those. And honestly, I prefer creating my vlogs to the wrap-ups. So instead, what I'm going to do is maybe at the end of every three months, I'm going to do maybe like my top 10 books I've read in the last three months, or my top five best and my five worst books that I've read over a three month period and do something like that. It just makes it so much easier for me to film, less stress, just more fun. So that's a couple of tangents to kickstart this weekly vlog. So yeah, I hope you're all doing really well. 
well. Let's see what the rest of this week brings, but what I do know tonight is bringing is food, because oh my god I'm so hungry, and two, yesterday evening I started marinated some tofu, I filmed that bit, so I'm gonna pop that in now and show you what I'm gonna be doing with it, and I'm so excited to try it out. I think we're gonna do that as soon as the kitchen is free. For now I'll probably, yeah, I'm gonna, I wanna say film TikToks, which I probably will end up doing, but I also just wanna collapse because I'm tired after work. So I guess we'll see. Good morning. I'm not gonna lie, yesterday's reading put me in such a weird mood. I don't know if you guys get that, but when you're reading a book and you're just not enjoying it, it really does get me down, which is weird, but it really does. Like, if I'm having a good book, I'm having a good day. Like, I'm excited, I'm enjoying it, and so everything feels so much better. But when you have a book that just isn't doing it, I do just get so meh. And that's kind of how I see the whole day, like, it was a good day. Yesterday at work was a nice, chill day. Because I didn't enjoy the book I was reading, it goes from being a good day to just a ick day. Which is silly, but that's the way it is. And that's why I want to be a bit harsher in DNFing, because if I'm being honest, I would have DNFed this book. Like, I was watching myself, because I edit these videos, um, talk about this book initially, and I was like, oh, I really like it, and I do think that was a bit too, like, I'm hyping this book up because I wanted to like it, and then this week has just been like, eh, I haven't really enjoyed this book at all. But I did finish it. I ke did keep hoping that there would be character development, that things would go better and stuff, and yes, there would be, but I also feel like this book was just pulled in a few too many different directions. So we had, as I've said, the bullying that goes on in this, and I do think it's important to talk about it and to highlight the fact that it does happen, the effect it can have on your mental health because of it, and the long lasting side effects because of all of it, and all of the kids that we meet are all going through their own thing and you do learn about all of them so yes very very important message and I don't want to underplay that however actually reading this book I just didn't enjoy it I feel like there were points in this book though that were amazing so what's actually going on does link back to a specific fairy tale and I really liked that and those parts of the book were amazing and I just feel like if we had focused more on that it would have been better or if this had been more of that contemporary thing like it just felt like it was doing too many things at once and it did feel like it dragged a little bit because of it and so the parts that I really enjoyed were really few and far between and would literally last like a couple of pages and then that's it so unfortunately for me this was a bit of a miss it did have elements that I liked but overall I just couldn't get on with it. And I made it so that this was the only book I took to work to make sure that I actually finished this book because I was feeling like I want to DNF. And part of me was going, oh, but I've already DNF two books this month. I don't want to be having a third one this month. That's not great. But you know what? It's better to DNF a book instead of trying to get for it and not enjoying it. I haven't gained anything from finishing this book. There are books which, honestly, I've DNF'd and then I've gone, oh no, I've really enjoyed that. Like Bunny last week. That was a book I previously DNF, just because I found it so weird, and I finished it and I'm fascinated with it. But this is one where there wasn't really any interest in there for me. 
and at the end of the day I can always go back to a book like I did with Bunny if I'm not feeling it at that time but I want to pick it up at a later date. I don't know, I've, I've heard so many good things about this book and so that I think that was another thing like I really hyped it up in my mind thinking it's going to be really good and awesome portal fantasy, almost like an Every Heart of Doorway uh, by Shauna Maguire-esque because I love this series and actually I, I do need to actually carry on with this series. Maybe I'll treat myself and get the next two in the series but like this is a portal fantasy, it's with children, I love it, I think it's fantastic. And so I was kind of hoping for something a bit similar with this but just with more of a social look at Japanese culture and also that I knew that there were some mental health represented in this as well so I was like oh it's gonna be quite good especially because Shauna Maguire she also looks into different things like she does it in a lot more of a blunt fashion because these are like 200 pages a lot but she looks into gender, identity, the fact that your parents can try and force you to be somebody you're not and she looks at all these different topics her book each book covers a different topic while also exploring the world and everything. So I was kind of hoping for that and I just didn't get that which was a shame. So that wasn't great and then yesterday evening I got home from work and I found this waiting for me and I'm very excited. This is The Mystery of the Yellow Room by Gaston Leroux and my mum got this for me because she watches every single one of my videos. She saw me talking about this when I was doing my 24 hour readathon when I was reading Phantom of the Opera and a little note inside that book was this book existed and that it inspired Agatha Christie and I was like oh I have to get that because I want to read Agatha Christie and so my mum picked it up for me and look at the cover that she found. Isn't that just amazing? I'm in love. It's like that kind of old time but also slightly garish with all the colours in it effect like oh I love it and under the dust jacket is that look at that that is beautiful so yeah I was very happy because I had finished Lonely Castle Mirror at work and I was feeling really meh and then I found this waiting for me and I was very excited very very excited I cannot wait to read this I'm actually thinking to read it in October because obviously September TBR has already chosen it's quite hefty um so I'm thinking to read this in October I think that's going to be really fun especially because I am starting Agatha Christie then as well no I'm not I'm starting Agatha Christie this month so it'll be a good time yes yeah, anyway, we're going to read it in October. I'm very excited to read the mystery that inspired Agatha Christie. I think it's great. And then even on the back, it's been blurbed by Hercule Poirot. Ugh. You know, my mom's partner told me exactly how to pronounce that yesterday. And I've forgotten already. I really need to work on I'm going to get that down, I promise. Um, but one of Agatha Christie's characters that she created has blurbed the back of this, which I think is amazing. And he says, definitely a masterpiece. So I'm, I'm super excited. I cannot wait to read this. I think it's going to be great and a good time. And I might even do a whole vlog on it where we try and solve the mystery and stuff. Yeah, super excited. So that definitely increased my mood. And then in the evening I also decided to pick up a different book just to kind of cleanse the palette after reading Lonely Castle in the Mirror and I went with the last book on my August TBR and that's Ovid's The Fall of Icarus and this is a Penguin Little Black Classic. These are really good for just tasters um, and this is a little extract from The Metamorphosis which I now own. I really enjoyed it, it was a good way to just see what Ovid's writing is like. This one is translated by Mary M Inns. I enjoyed it, it was good. I liked that it wasn't just about Icarus, it was also lots of different stories woven into one another so that was really fun. Definitely a few names that I was like oh I want to learn more about this person so I'll probably do a bit of research every when I feel like it just to get bit more used to that mythology or if they're mentioned a bit more in Metamorphosis then that'd be great. I'm really really pleased with this, this was good. I am pleased that I picked this one up at the end of the day because it just meant that I went to bed in a bit of a better mood reading wise rather than that. So yeah that's where we're at. I think what the plan is going to be is just to start September TBR early because I only have a few days left of the month so I might as well just start that early and I am actually feeling like if We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. Now that could change. I do have about just under an hour before I need to go to work. No, I've got half an hour. 
good thing I checked. Um, before I need to go to work, so I might change because I'm also feeling Dangerous Remedy. I haven't quite decided which one I'm gonna go with, but I'm kind of more leaning towards this one just because I kind of want an adult book whereas this one is a YA historical fiction fantasy thing, which honestly I'm really, really am excited to read, but also after reading Lonely Cast in the Mirror, I just want some older characters in my books. So I'm thinking maybe just go with this one. We'll see, I could change my mind, but that's what I'm thinking. And yeah, so now I have half hour to get ready, so I should probably pack my bag, get ready for work and all of those things. It does look like rain today, so definitely gonna be bringing my coat to work. Okay, right, I'm, I'm now just, sitting here rambling procrastinating getting ready for work yeah all right i'll go Good evening! I am back from work and it has been a couple days since I've updated so I should probably let you know what I've been up to. Yes that'd be a good start. So when did I even update? Tuesday morning? What day are we on? Wednesday. I honestly for all of Tuesday thought that it was Monday so I'm still not 100% of the days of the week but we're gonna say it's Wednesday and hopefully I'm right. Tuesday I did end up going to work obviously but while I was at work I did a bit of thrift shopping on my lunch break which I was so happy with and I came out with so many things so let me show you those first okay so the most exciting part was a charity shop that had four books for one pound I was just yes loving it I was so so excited when I found it especially because I haven't actually explored Seven Oaks Town so I work in Seven Oaks but I've never actually explored it this was a nice chance because I actually had a long lunch break and I just went exploring, loved it, and um, I got a few books. <laughs> On the four for a pound, I first spotted Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House, and this is something that I've been wanting to read for a little while because it's meant to be such a scary book. I know there's been like film adaptations and Netflix adaptations, stuff like that. I just know there's been adaptations and apparently they're really scary. I am a wuss when it comes to things scary, so I haven't watched them, but we'll see how I fare <laughs> reading this. I did read a short story collection by Shirley Jackson. I found it really unusual, but also can see like the nightmare-esque elements to it all so I'm really intrigued to actually read one of her novels. was really happy with that and I got it in the Penguin Modern Classic editions which I do really like for these ones as well. Then I also saw The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. Now this is actually a repurchase. <laughs> years and years ago my dad told me about this book so I decided to pick it up but I never really got into it but at work I have a colleague at work who also told me to get The Pillars of Earth. Is it Earth? Yeah, The Pillars of Earth by Ken Follett. And I saw that one in a charity shop recently, which you'll be seeing in a video coming up shortly, which I don't know when's coming out, but it'll come up eventually. And so I picked that one up, but that same colleague has also been non-stop telling me to read this one. And I was like, my dad liked it, he likes it, I should give this a go. So again, four for a pound. Like, I can't be complaining at this price. I will get around to this eventually. All I know is that it's some sort of heist story. The Thorn of Camor is said to be an unbeatable swordsman, a master thief, a friend to the poor, a ghost that walks through walls. I really don't know too much about this. I know I tried reading the first like chapter or so and then gave up, but that was years ago, so let's see if I prefer it now. And then I also saw Printer's Devil's Court by Susan Hill, and I was like, Susan Hill, I know that author. Why do I know that author? And that's because she is the author that wrote The Woman in Black, and I went to see The Woman in Black at theatre years and years ago. Like, probably like 12 years ago? Maybe more? No, more than that. I don't actually know, but regardless, I saw the author and I was like, I'm really intrigued. I read the back and it says, I tried to keep my tone light as I asked. Now, what is this all about? What are you proposing? 
we are proposing, Walter replied, to bring the dead back to life. That was it, automatic buy. That was all I needed to know. That's all I wanted to know. I love this cover. So yeah, so another horror. I'm not sure if this is a classic. I'm thinking it should be a classic, or at least a modern classic, because Susan Hill did The Woman in Black, and that's amazing. That is just a timeless classic, in my opinion. So yeah, re really excited. This is a little hardback as well. And then the fourth book, I didn't know. Like, this charity shop was honestly a shambles. It was a mess. You had to really rummage through everything. They always had boxes of books that they hadn't yet put out, but because they're like, all books are four for a pound, whether they're hardback or paperback, we don't really care. You just have to rummage and so that's what I did and I came across this gem which is so garish I love it it's just perfect so this is the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde yes do I already own two copies of this book yes but I couldn't say no look at that look at that ridiculousness and it has green sprayed edges I just had to this thing is garish it is a pulp classic which is like a series of books that they did bring out where they were in all of this pulp look and I love it I think it's great so yeah I was really happy to find this to be honest and I did have another rummage but I couldn't find any other books that I was interested in so I thought you know what to make it four for a pound I may as well get this otherwise all the books were 50 pence each and I was like you know what I'm getting two books for free I might as well get this and it is it's it's scarish and it's amazing. And even the back of this, it's hilarious how the summary is, because it's Dorian Gray might be as pretty as a picture, but he's paid a devilishly high price for it. He'll stay drop dead gorgeous, but there's something nasty festering in the attic. And it's just, the synopsis go so well with this pulp take on the classics. So yeah, I loved it. I just thought it was great. Even this bit, wild about the boy and it being wild of the surname of Oscar Wilde, like, yeah. I don't know, I fell in love with it, so that was great. And then I went through loads more charity shops. Oh wait, actually, at that same charity shop, I also picked up a little frame. This isn't the oval brass ones, which I have been desperately holding out for so I can get a fourth one to match the three I already have. But I did decide to pick up just an extra little one because I do have more than one more art print that I want to frame. And it is in this, the goldy brass look that I'm going for, so decided why not, it was 50 pence. Can't really go wrong with that. Um, but yes, but then I carried on around some more shops and I stopped off in one of the charity shops and got myself a jumper because, okay, I don't need jumpers. I have enough. But it was £3. You can't say no to that. £3. It is slightly too big, so it's going to be like an off-the-shoulder look. But I'm really excited for it and it's in a lovely colour and I don't have this colour of pink. I have a lot of shades of pink and purple in my jumpers, but I don't have this shade. And now I do. And it was £3. Like, you can't pass that up. Like, that's really good. And then in the last charity shop I went into is actually Oxfam Books, which in the UK is this really good charity shop for books. Like, it's probably one of the best charity shops you can go to for books. And in there, I found The Mysteries of Udofo by Anne Radcliffe. So I did actually pay more for this. I actually paid £2 for this one book. I don't care. I'm very happy with that. I have been wanting to read this book ever since I read Northanger Abbey. You would know that if you've seen my other videos because I've been non-stop talking about it. So yeah, really, really pleased. And it was in the edition that I wanted. I wanted it in the Oxford World Classic Edition to go with my other ones that I have. I couldn't say no. This is so beautiful. And part of the Seven Oaks bookshop is that you actually get to choose a bookmark to go with it because they're trying to convince people not to fold the pages, which I found hilarious. And you could just have a little rummage through. They had all of these leather bookmarks with different detailing on it and I went for this one. I really liked it. I loved the colour of it. I was very happy with my free bookmark as well and this book which I have been wanting to get so that was really good. So honestly I got five books for three pound and that was a good bargain if I ever saw one. Absolutely loved it. And then that evening I went to my partner's, spent the morning with him before having work today. I did go around 7X again just checking the rest of the charity shops because there is loads there and I couldn't do all of it on my lunch break so I did some half and then half today. Didn't get anything today, I think I hit all the really good ones yesterday but I'm fine with that. Instead I did go for tea and cake at the local independent bookstore which I have been to before. Lovely little bookstore and I was reading my book which as you would have seen I went with If We Were Villains. This is so good. <laughs> I'm loving this book so so much and um, 
yeah, this is great. So I'm up to page 136, which is act two, scene six, which is one of the things that I love about this book and the formatting of it is that it's formatted like a play. So you don't get chapters, you get scenes and you don't get parts, you get acts. So you have act one prologue, which is our main character Oliver in kind of like present day where he's in prison for something, a crime that they think he's committed. And then you have scene one going forward is all from the past when he was going to this elite performing arts school with six other friends and they are Shakespeare actors. So they have been specializing in Shakespeare plays. You get to know all these different characters. You get to know their different quirks, their different interests, the way who they always portray as characters, how it's kind of become a part of their personality traits now. It's so, so good. So yeah, I love, love the formatting of this. I also do like the fact they do talk to each other in Shakespearean quotes. They are in so deep with Shakespeare, it is a part of their everyday life. Like this acting performing arts school is not just about putting on different plays. This is Shakespeare solely. It is ingrained in everything they do. That's the only plays they will ever perform is Shakespeare. And so it's understandable that they then quote lines back and forth to each other because it immerses it even more considering that is all of their plays, like that is what's going to happen. And this is such an elite plays where you can finish the year, finish the whole course and get no certificate for it if you haven't performed better, like good enough. And I just think that is so incredibly elitist and so difficult that I can understand that we have these seven characters that have just immersed themselves so deeply into it that the Shakespearean language and quotes is a fundamental part of them. And that's how they do communicate, not all the time, but definitely frequently. And I know that has been some complaints that I've read and heard um, of people's reviews of this, that some people don't like that because it's not realistic. You're not gonna be doing that. However, I think in this setting, it is realistic because they are entrenched within Shakespeare. So I think it's actually part of it, but maybe that's just me. So yeah, the Shakespearean language, I don't mind at all. I actually really do like Shakespeare. It's weird, it's one of those things that I had to study it at school. And I did, I studied Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet at school. And it was one of those things like, I liked it, but I also resented it because I had to study it and I did find it hard. Whereas now I have so much appreciation. Like I read Macbeth simply for me, for my enjoyment and I loved it, it was so good. And Macbeth is actually referenced quite a lot in this. They're putting on the play of Macbeth, they're doing a couple of scenes from it. So I loved reading that and seeing how they reenacted it. It was so good. If you like Shakespeare, you're gonna like this book. I, I do think it works well. And we do have the mystery element, which I really want to talk about my theory. So I think I'm going to do what I did for a previous murder mystery reading thing is put up spoilers because I really want to talk about it. So if you want to read this book, but you don't want to be spoiled and I don't get me wrong, I don't know if my theory is correct. I still have 300 pages to go, but this is where I'm at. You do not know who has died, but you know someone has died. Now my theory is the person that dies is Richard. He is a dick. <laughs> He is the one that's normally got all of like the villain roles and he acts like a villain. He doesn't get cast for the villain within Macbeth and he has a right ump about this and starts being an actual dick to everybody else. Like he is so horrible. He's hurting the other actors and stuff. He is just being horrendous. So I think he dies because let's face it, he's an a-hole. Now, another reason why I think it's him is because we know it's not Oliver because he's the one narrating the story. We know it's not Philippa because she comes to meet Oliver in present day to meet him when he's released from prison, which happens in act two. We know it's not Meredith because they talk about Meredith and they also talk about Alexander. So we know it's not those four. That leaves us with three people, which it could be Richard, Wren, which is Richard's cousin, or James. And I think it was Richard. I think Richard was murdered for being such an ass. I also think James is the one that killed him because there have just been little tidbits. So for example, where I just left it, James and Oliver are talking to each other about Richard, about what Richard's been doing. And James and Oliver is so filled with like anger and frustration at how he's being, is so fed up with it and doesn't know what they can do about it. And James has been saying, upon what meat does this our Caesar feed that he has grown so great? Which basically Richard is playing Caesar. And so he's saying, 
why has he become so full of himself like what makes him so great what are we going to do about this basically oliver in response says and i will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest james replies saying there's a bargain made there was something unfamiliar in his smile, some fierce gladness that made me at once eager and uneasy. And it's that that really made me go, I think it's James. I think James has been doing things deliberately to set Richard off because there's been other things that's been going on in this book so that James could then rub it in his face that James got the role that Richard wanted. And as a result, James is going to murder Richard, but because Oliver loves him and has admitted earlier on in the book to being obsessed with him, all these things that just, that makes me, when I read it, go, oh, you love this man. You love him so much, but you haven't admitted it to yourself yet. Because of that, I think Oliver takes the fall for it, as well as the fact that Oliver does struggle with always feeling like he's just a supporting person, he's a supporting actor, he is just that, he's not that great, he's never going to do anything big or fantastic with his life, so he takes the fall. And that is what I think happens. So I reckon Richard dies, James Mer kills him, and Oliver takes the fall for it. That is what I think is going on. I don't know whether I'm right or not, like I said, I've still got two thirds of the book to go. But that is my theory. So let's see if that's right. I also really want to get some tabs for this book and actually tab up those moments where I've been feeling like, oh, I think this is the reason why it's happening. I think this is the start of it. I just, I really, really want to do that. So I'm going to be looking, I think tomorrow on my lunch break at work, going into 7X Town again, because there are so many stationery stores there as well. And surely in one of them are going to be the aesthetic sort of tabs that I'm looking for. I really want them in like different tones of like, dark greys or greens or something like that. That is what I would like. I know you can get them on Amazon, but I much prefer buying in store instead of through Amazon. So hopefully I can find some tomorrow. If not, then I guess I'll make do with normal tabs, but I would really like it if we could just do the aesthetic look. So yeah, that's that's the that's what I'm loving about this book. I have been underlining, I have been folding pages, I have just I've been loving this book so so much. I think it's so much fun. I love the fact that we have that mystery of we don't know who's died yet and it's just yeah it's been great. It's been absolutely great. I have realised that a murder mystery is probably my favourite thing to read at the moment. That and a classic book. Those are the two things that I am just loving at the moment. So yeah that's where we're at and I have been talking for 20 minutes so I do apologize <laughs> this is this has been great so I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna do food and I will catch up with you hopefully when I've been able to find some tabs for this and made some more progress and oh gosh we'll see whether my theory is correct but um yes exciting times I was right. I was right. Good morning, by the way. But I was right. I was right about who died. We still don't know who's done it, but we know who died. And I was right about that. So that's a good point. I have about 100 pages to go. No, I don't. I have about 200 pages to go. Wait, what? I swear I only had 100 left. That's really more than 100. What was I on yesterday? Yeah, that is 200 pages left to go. I was like, oh, I've only got 100 pages left. I'm gonna finish it today at work. It's gonna be amazing. No, that's 200 pages left. Okay, well, we're not as far ahead as I thought, but we have 200 pages left to go. The person <laughs> who died, I was correct about. The people that done it, the person that's done it, we don't know yet. But we do have 200 pages left to go. Okay, well, that's probably not gonna be finished today then. There goes that plan out the window. Moving on, I am still really enjoying this by the way, I think it's great. Um, I don't want to talk too much about what's happening in it because it is all spoilers, but I am up to act two, I want to say, or is it act three? Act three, scene eight. 
and then at the start of each act I've said this before already but just it's continuing on with that the prologue is Oliver in real time telling the inspector what's happened and then the scenes are from the past so yeah we're at that point now where the person's died we have half the book left to go to work out who's actually done it I'm still sticking with my theory on this but yeah really excited now yesterday I wanted as we know to go and find some aesthetic looking tabs that didn't happen clearly there's no tabs in this yet they had the neon bright tabs and things like that like I went to three different stationery stores and they didn't have the tabs that I was after but I do have some of these like they're little pastel tabs and I'm just like I don't want to pay out for some neon bright ones when that's not what I want when I have these so I might spend today just doing that for now and then when I eventually find the aesthetic looking tabs that I want I will swap them over but yeah it's just a bit frustrating because I, I really don't want to have to pay for it on Amazon but yeah I don't know we'll see but if now I'll probably use those so today I was all like oh I'm going to finish this book that's probably not going to happen now I mean it might because I might just read it in the evening when I get back home we'll see you I guess you'll know tomorrow whether I did actually finish it or not um but definitely hoping to get the tabs done and so then yesterday to make myself feel better over the fact that I couldn't find any tabs that I wanted I bought some more books these are all thrifted so I picked them up in a charity shop I thought I had seen all the charity shop however this charity shop was done up in such a way it looked like a boutique so I didn't go into it on the previous days and then I realized it was actually a charity shop and so I went in and they had a lovely little book section at the back I really should have filmed in there but I was just honestly upset over the loss of the tabs anyway I picked up four books so we have Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club now yes those of you that have watched my bookshelf tour or have just been on this channel for a little while would know that I already have this book in hardback but I am drastically running out of space on my shelves like ridiculously slow like okay tangent coming in here but I was watching my bookshelf tour from two years ago so like when I first started this channel it was like two and a bit years ago wow is all I have to say because I had these two shelves they were not this color and I had so much space like so much space but I was watching it with my partner because I, I was just at his house this was a few days ago and I was honestly cussing because <laughs> I was like I don't have that book anymore those shelves look awful like I was really laying into it and my partner was in hysterics and so I'm thinking I might actually do that as a video idea of just me reacting to that because we have a whole extra shelf now as well and it is jam-packed and I'm running out of space so I've decided that I'm gonna swap over the hardbacks into the paperbacks I do prefer reading paperbacks generally just for convenience sake the hardbacks do look beautiful but they are easier but I'm only going to pick these up in charity shop so I picked this one up it was £1.50 so yeah I'm going to be slowly swapping them out getting the paperbacks from charity shops because I need the second one and then the third one is due to come out soon but I also want to read it soon so I'm thinking I might actually pay full price and get the hardback so I can read it straight away and support obviously Richard Osman and the bookshop I will again once paperback comes out and if I find it in a charity shop pick it up in a charity shop is it going to bug me for a little while that I'm going to have mismatching because one's going to be paperback and then the other's a hardback? Yes. But I need to think about space on my shelves and that's becoming a drastic problem, she says, with buying more books. But anyway, then we have The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepherd, And this is one that I've actually had on my Waterstones wish list for a little while now because I saw, I'm not even sure how I saw this, like whether it was on Instagram or whether I was just doing some scrap, who knows. I found this and this is a t retelling in a way of Dr Moreau's Island. We're following Dr Moreau's daughter so I am super excited about this. I love retellings and I love like books that have been inspired or like continuations in a weird way so I have high hopes for this one. I actually don't know what it's about I just know that our main character is Dr Moreau's daughter and that's all I needed to know. So of course when I saw that in a charity shop I was like well that's perfect. And then I also picked up F Scott Fitzgerald tender is the night and this I was really pleased with because it's actually in the exact same edition that I had the great Gatsby in with the white spine of the penguin modern classics 
So I was very excited. I actually do want to read more F. Scott Fitzgerald. I've only ever read Great Gatsby and that was I think for GCSEs. So it's been a while and I would really like to read more by him and also his wife and the non-fiction book that I've got about them. Like it's a whole thing that I would like to do. So of course when I saw this and it was in the edition that my other one is in, couldn't say no. And then the last one I picked up is Shakespeare's Henry VIII, which as we know, because I've already said this week, I really like Shakespeare really good, really want to read more of it. And so of course when I saw that one, this one was only a pound, I was like, well, can't really say no. And it's in the edition that I want to collect Shakespeare in because these Penguin Black Splines, honestly, I don't love, but I do want to have a stack of Shakespeare all in this edition because I don't know why, but for me that just, that works. So yeah, found this one. So that was to make up for the fact that I couldn't find the tabs that I wanted. Was it smart? Probably not. But have I saved loads of money doing books only secondhand this month? Hell yes, so much money. And then that was it really. Yesterday was nice and chill. I did try pumpkin spice latte for the first time. I actually quite liked it. My partner was like, it's so basic, but you'll like it. And I was like, I really did though. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. I've got my last day of work today. I've got two days off, so that's gonna be great. That's it. I mean, hoping today that I don't buy any more books because somehow this week we've managed to buy nine books, but we've only spent eight pounds. So I think that's a bargain considering that for nine books, I've spent the price of what would have been one book. So I really do think that's good. And I might try and continue on with this only thrifting books until the end of the year, just to save money. I mean, I do firmly believe book buying and book reading, two completely different interests. I will never read the amount that I buy. I don't know, who knows? I could be try and do one of those things where I read a book, I can buy a book, but reality wise, that's never gonna happen. Anyway, right, okay, I actually do need to get ready for work, get changed out of my PJs and just, you know, do adult stuff, try and find space for these. Like I've actually rearranged my books so much. Like I just did this big rearrangement and I'm already having to rejiggle the shelves around to fit more books in. It's a bit of a problem. I think we're gonna have to go through and do an unhaul and be really strict with my shelves because I need space. But also I could just pile them. I could literally, I think it's gonna be a case of I just have book piles around my room. Like I think that's the point that we're getting to. Anyway, right. I've said don't ramble about 10 times now. 10 times? I don't know, probably not. Anyway, I'm gonna go, I've got work to do. Oh, I did have, did find a really nice like little walking bit yesterday. Well, at, I say I found it, work lot told me about it, but it was really lovely and like nice little field and stuff. So that was nice little walk around yesterday as well. But yeah, right, okay, let's go. Good morning, it is Saturday morning and I did actually finish If We Were Villains yesterday and I, loved this book. I've actually got so many tabs. I don't know if you can see. Look at those. I had so much fun sorting out all the tabs as well. So I've done three colours. So blue is for things that link up to the mystery. So either the person I thought was going to die, the reason why I thought they were going to die, the people that I thought, well, the people person that I thought did it, uh, a backup theory, so that was a lot of fun tabbing all of those moments and then green was just for genuine quotes that I really love and then pink is for Oliver and a specific love interest which if you watch my spoiler bit you know who I think that is and everything like developing with that I really enjoyed those parts as well so yeah this was really good and you know what I was correct in everything in what I originally said I know to some people they may not enjoy it, especially because I did guess everything from around the 100 page mark however I still loved this book like I loved seeing it all growing seeing the tension seeing everything just kind of falling apart between this group of people and them just trying desperately to scramble to save it and just failing I really enjoyed it I also loved all the Shakespeare parts in this I I've said it I think I've said it already, but if you don't like Shakespeare, I wouldn't recommend this book because there is so much Shakespeare in it. Obviously they are putting on plays of Shakespeare, so you have all of that. And then you have them conversing and using quotes from Shakespeare to express themselves. And I loved it. I actually really enjoyed trying to find out the meaning behind all these quotes. Like it was not just a Shakespeare quote, it was the meaning behind it and 
to do with the context that they were talking in and I just I loved this I really really enjoyed this it's probably one of my favorite books of the year it just it had all the right vibes atmosphere just the growing tension the way that this was formatted like I loved all of it so so much and even the way it ended like it was so bitter but then it kind of ended on like this hopeful moment which I really liked as well so yeah really really enjoyed this would recommend if you like Shakespeare and dark academia and just yeah this was this was very good and this kind of shows what I think dark academia is which is where it taking a love for a subject to the extremes and you're kind of becoming those people or you're taking those theories to an extreme where it makes you question the morality of things and yeah that's what dark academia is for me and that book definitely definitely does it i really really enjoyed it so yeah loved it yesterday i didn't really do too much at all i wasn't really feeling that great so i just focused on my book that was uh, ends up being a good day because i enjoyed this book so much as for today well it's my day off i have the weekend off so i'm going to be spending that hopefully with my partner we'll see what happens there but i think for now we're actually going to wrap up this vlog because i have finished the book i was reading and i'm just debating what to pick up next i haven't fully decided yet so i guess we're going to find out together in next week's vlog well all right technically i'll know a lot sooner than you but you'll know in next week's vlog if you have made it this far then let's put i don't know what to put because i feel like a bird i've done a lot of birds lately actually you know what any academia type thing so like there's a scroll uh, i think there's like a pen and everything so maybe something like that actually because this was yeah perfect 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 oh let me know have you read this do you like shakespeare do you even like dark academia those are the questions the emoji as said let's go something academia related and yeah we will leave it there for the week so thank you so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed if you have enjoyed it please do give it that thumbs up subscribe comment to let me know that you're here social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the next one